Okay, can everyone hear me? <clears throat> Let me know if everybody can hear me. We have a couple of questions in there. Cooper, I've been going over fail all morning and we're running like 15 minutes late here and I'm, I said I'd give a lecture at 1030. If you want to email me, I can answer your question later today in an email. And I'll do a play of the day video later. But we've gone over Faye like a bunch of times here now. And I said I took 5,000 shares, so you can do the math. But if you want to email me, or we can talk about it later. But I just, everyone's waiting here, and we're like 15 minutes late. <clears throat> okay. Paul, put my email in there for Cooper. All in all, it was a great day. Every person in here should be up money. If you did either play or gap that I liked, ENDP or Faye, you're up. You, you couldn't have screwed up today if you followed my direction. Everyone should be profitable, okay? Very good. All right, welcome. My name is Melissa Armo in a company called The Stock Swoosh, and today I wanted to do a lecture on what? Hmm, it's a good topic. Today's topic lecture is change and procrastination. So here I drew a picture. As you know, I like to talk and use examples of things and pictures. This is a mountain, and you see the mountain, all right? And you're at the bottom of the mountain, and you see this here, okay? It's a rock. You've got to get that rock to the top of the mountain. Because it's a rock, and because the mountain is gymongous, you procrastinate because it's going to take a lot of energy. It's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take physical effort, financial effort, emotional effort for you to get that rock up here. Okay. You, you, you're fully aware of it. So you're standing back. You're over here. You're a couple streets away. But you know that you've got this rock that you have to move up on top of the mountain. And I'm using this as an example and I'm telling a story because this is how many, many people look at trying to proceed with their own lives. What do I mean by that? Say you're in a job right now that you're not happy with. The idea of changing careers, maybe from a job that you're not happy with to becoming a day trader, like me or other people that are in the room with me, seems like something that is like climbing a mountain. So you procrastinate about it. You procrastinate to make the necessary changes to move the rock up the mountain to get there. You procrastinate about making change in your life, which would be what? Changing careers because you're doing something that you don't like. And maybe you're even doing something that you don't even, you're not even making enough money. Or maybe you're doing something that you actually do like, but you're not making enough money and therefore you're not happy with your life. Because when we do jobs, even if we love the job, if we can't afford to pay our bills with a job, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to feel like secure because ultimately we have to be able to put a roof over our heads, feed ourselves, pay our, our car bills, our car loans, our credit cards, our electric bill, whatever, okay, the necessities in life. So we need a career in order to sustain us or a job. Some people have jobs, they don't have careers. I think the good thing about trading is actually something that could be a career. Now, whether you want to make it a career or not, or look at it like a regular job, is something just money, that's up to you. You might be doing a career that you love, but you're not making enough money. So this could maybe sustain the career that you do love that doesn't bring in enough money so that you can make more money to keep the job or the career that you actually enjoy. Not having to quit and find something else that you don't like. Because trading only happens so quickly, as you saw. We were in and out of Fay within 30 minutes today. And you could have held it longer. I didn't, but you could have, okay? Either way, 30 minutes, you're up, you're out, you're done. Same thing with the NDP. So here you are, you're a couple streets away. You see the mountain in the distance. You see the rock at the bottom of the mountain. You see it. But the reality is the idea of climbing that mountain with a rock on your back is just, it's too much. You can't handle it. So you procrastinate. This is a good lecture today because I personally have procrastinated about setting up my platform, setting up my new computer, setting up e-signal, setting up everything to make my trading life easier for 
what will almost be a year? I say September of 2015 when it really started to become a problem, but really it started, it started to, uh, we started to become a problem in the summer of last year because Orbis started to have problems like June, July of last year. So it's May. It's, it's really almost been like a full calendar year that I have had issues with Orbis charts that have never gotten fixed. And as far as I'm concerned, probably will never be fixed because if you can't fix a problem in 30 to 60 or 90 days, the problem is not important to you. So the chances of them fixing it are probably zero. Finally, I hired Paul. He's going to help me get eSignal up. But I can't download eSignal until my new computer set up. And guess what? I paid for and bought it in November, Black Friday weekend. Got a great deal. Sitting here, sitting on my dining room table. Can't even have you over for dinner tonight. I would not be able to have you over for dinner tonight. We'd have to sit on my sofa, which I wouldn't let us do, unless I put a big blanket over it because it's a swaying sofa and I wouldn't want to get anything on it. And I have a cream rug. So actually, we, we couldn't actually eat. We'd have to go out. I We'd have to eat in my bedroom. <laughs> We couldn't eat on my dining room table because my computer now, the new computer is on the dining room table taking up all the room. I can't have anyone over for dinner and we can't eat on my sofa because I don't want to ruin it and we can't eat in the living room because I have a cream rug. So the bottom line is this whole thing, not having this computer set up now has taken over my life, taken over my trading. I procrastinated to the point of what? Now let's go to slide number two. There. Do you see that? Here, let me bring it up. Make sure, make sure you see the next slide. That now is slide number two. Do you see it? So, now this simple thing, changing my computer that I procrastinated forever, has become the biggest rock on the planet that now I have to move up a mountain. And, and this has been the biggest rock on the planet now for months. The rock has been, I can't lift the rock myself now. That's the, that's what procrastination has done to me. Now, go with me here, okay? I'm using myself as an example with the computer issue because it's a great example for what many people do with their own lives with number one, their training, and number two, changing their life circumstances, which may be their career or finances, which training plays a part into it because it's something that can offer you number one, a career or more money. Okay, especially if you're in here just taking my trades. But the point is now look what I made for myself. Because of my own procrastination, I took a tiny, tiny little rock and have made it into a monster, bold, huge boulder. It's a boulder now. Now I got to still hook up the computer and get the boulder up the mountain. To make matters worse, Dell didn't send me the cord I need to hook up the two flat screens. They can't be connected. I can't trade without two screens. By the time I called and realized this, which now was two months ago, it was March, they no longer sell the screens. They discontinue the screens. As often they do with Black Friday, they offer specials for things they're gonna discontinue. It was November, I called in March. They said, too bad, we, don't, we can't even send you the cord, Melissa. We don't sell the screens. They told me they were gonna send me two new screens. They never did. I have spent hours on the phone with them and the boulder has gotten bigger. Instead of just, Instead of just moving up the mountain, I have made this small rock now a massive boulder that I still have to get up the mountain. At the top of the mountain, my computer is hooked up. I'm using e-signal. Charts are flowing. You can see everything while I'm doing it. Everybody's happy. I have no stress. Paul doesn't get mad at me. Neither do you people in here in the room because my computer has so many problems. But do you see here how my procrastination of one small thing that I could have resolved at, at any point, I could have resolved it in June, July, August, September. I did go on vacations at the end of September, came back in October. I could have done it then. Then then I ordered the computer finally in November. Could have done it then. Could have done it in December. Could have done it. I mean, I, I just, the, it's a boulder. Do you see this? And I'm using myself as an example with the computer because this is what many, many people do with their trading. They will not take the bull by the horns. They will not jump in. They will procrastinate. They will go to every free webinar on the planet instead of paying for a class. They will find something good, be afraid to take the class and spend the money, train, keep losing in the market until they've lost so much money that the small amount that they've lost that was a tiny rock to get up the mountain is now a boulder. And, and then it's a boulder. The amount of losses that they have taken hits in the market is now a boulder rock that they have to get up. And then they have to pay for my class too. So they've got to pay five grand for my class and they have losses and now it's a boulder. 
because of what? Procrastination. Not wanting to shell out the money to pay to learn something from someone like me and, and trying to figure it out themselves in the market, which, which I got to tell you, you know, is challenging. I credit myself for figuring out the stuff I know. Everyone that knows me credits me for that that was in my life during that time because it was hard, but I was very determined and I had a loving, supportive family that supported me and I'm a strong person too. And I had a lot of money. I had a lot of money at the time. I lost it in the market, but if I hadn't been able to bankroll myself, I would have been screwed. But I kept working. I kept working full time. I had no life for three years. Many people wouldn't do that. But many, many people make problems worse for themselves. I am right there with the computer. And so I'm doing this lecture today to help you, but I want you to relate it to something in your own life. Something in your own life that you look at that is a small, small thing like this. Okay, I'm bringing it back. And, and, and could be small like this for a while. This could, this is a small, it's a small thing for, you know, a couple of months. You could, it could even be small for a year. But as the years go by and the months go by and the weeks go by, it turns into a boulder because of procrastination. Now, I'm going to make you think about one more thing here too. Now, hold on. Let's pretend you go back. Let's pretend you're one of those very few people that exist on the planet that is uh, amazing. You never procrastinate. You've got it all going on, okay? You say, I'm tackling this thing. I'm not a procrastinator. I'm not a person that procrastinates. I'm going over initially when the rock is small. And you go over and you say, I'm just going to just tackle this thing. I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to get on top of the mountain. I'm going to learn how to train. I'm going to pay for the class. I'm going to tackle it and head on. I'm not going to waste any time of my life. I'm going to do it. Guess what? You go over. You're, you, you were standing far, far away when you saw the mountain and the rock. You go over. Guess what? It wasn't even a rock. The thing that you saw streets and streets away that you thought was a rock that you had to carry up the mountain wasn't even a rock at all. It was a flower. It was a flower with a dark ring around it. <laughs> Here, all you had to do was pick up that flower and just walk up the mountain. Do, 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 and follow the road up. Now, you still have to get up to the top. So I'm not saying there's no work involved. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying even at the beginning, you made it out to be worse than it was because you thought you had to not only get to the top of the mountain but carry a rock. You didn't know the size or the weight of the rock. But as it turns out, if you had been a person, which there's very few people like this, that tackle problems head on and never procrastinate with anything, I'm like that with some things but not everything. The bottom line is if you had walked straight over, tackled it head on, tackled the market, tackled trading, shelled out the money for the class, opened up an account, put it all forward, did it, took the chances, was ready to change immediately, didn't waste any time, didn't procrastinate, it, it ends up being so much easier than you ever dreamed because here it wasn't even a rock. It was just a flower. It had no weight to it. You could have picked up the flower and walked up the mountain. Now, you, it is a journey. It's a journey to get to the top. There's work involved. You have to learn the system. You gotta follow the trades. You have to pay for the class. You've got to follow my my direction. You gotta set up your charts. No one said there's no work, but I'm saying what you thought was work ended up being easier than what you thought if you don't procrastinate, don't wait, and are willing to just dive right in and do it. Which is the best outcome. Many people don't know this. And then you never you never know then that this really was a flower. You're in complete and total unawareness of it. Just like you don't you just like you don't know. Okay, that if you wait, the, the small rock that you thought was a rock, but it really wasn't a rock, it was a flower, is a boulder. You, at the time when you refuse to move forward, when I refused to set up my computer, had no idea how everything would collapse. At the time that Orbis was having problems, I didn't know my computer would stop working, I didn't know how come would stop working right, I didn't, I didn't know all the things that would turn into a boulder, on and on and on and on and on the trades that I would miss because of the computer. I mean, all the things. I, I couldn't even conceive of it because I was so caught up in the procrastination and the unwillingness to change of something that was small that would have been a flower if I'd been willing to just bite the bullet and do it a year ago. But the point I'm trying to make is at the same time that you don't realize that rock was a flower, you don't realize that the small rock it could turn into a boulder. 
So I'm telling you, that's what it will be turned into. Because every time we are forced to change, if we're not willing to do it, we make our situations and our life worse. You will eventually be forced to do it. You're never going to get away from the boulder. Whether that means you end up turning into a trader, or have to find a different career or do something else, at some point you won't escape the boulder. Okay? And this is the point that I'm trying to make. The easier we can make it for ourselves, the better it is in life. What does that mean? That means proceeding without fear and making the changes necessary to move forward with our life and not procrastinate sooner rather than later because it will always be harder the longer that we wait because the size of the rock, it will go from flower to baby rock to boulder. And it's the same way with our finances and it's the same way with our changing careers and it's the same way with learning how to trade. If you are in the market and you are losing, don't think that it's not going to turn into a boulder. It can. You've got to make the necessary changes. So that brings me to the next slide here. Hold on. This. So ultimately, the goal is to do what? To change. Change can be hard or change can be easy. What do, what do we do? The, 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 the sooner we make the change, the easier in the long run it will be. Might be hard to make the change quick, but it's like a Band-Aid. It's like ripping the Band-Aid off. Hard and painful at the beginning when you rip it off, but in the long run easier. If you're willing to do it quickly. If you are not willing to change quickly, guess what? It's easier for a while. And, 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 it, and it's easier and then it's easier and then it starts to get harder and harder and harder and harder and harder and then to actually make the change becomes so incredibly painful that you're up against the wall. And now you've got a boulder that you must move up the mountain and it, 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 you may not be able to do it. You, you might not be able to do it or you might not be able to do it alone or you might not be able to do it at all or you might just choose not to do it. And then you will stay stuck in your life and you'll never get where you want to be. Some people decide never to change. Their lives are stuck. They never make any changes. They never get out of financial difficulties. They end up declaring bankruptcy. They end up being forced to quit trading. They don't change careers. They're miserable for their lives. They're deep in debt. They just don't, they just, they make the situation so bad because they waited so long and procrastinated so, so long then that the change is impossible. They, they refuse to do it. They don't because it becomes so hard then to change. And even people then to get to this point, it's hard to change, you're up against the wall. Don't let yourself get up against the wall. Don't let yourself get up against the wall. So even though at the beginning, changing right away is maybe hard, it's like ripping a Band-Aid, pull it right off, in the end it'll be easier. The longer you wait, it seems easier as time goes by on and you don't make the changes, but then when change is forced upon you, which it eventually will be, it might be so impossible, you can't do it. You either can't do it at all, can't do it alone, or, or just, just don't do it. Or if you do do it, you're up against the wall and it's incredibly difficult and the process of going through the change then ages you, stresses you out, and, and it takes a big toll on you. More of a toll than it would if you just would have changed right away and ripped the Band-Aid off, as painful as it is. Okay? Does that make sense? So ultimately... The, the, the lesson today and what I wanted to get through in the lecture here today is that if you are doing anything in your life, and I always relate it back to trading because obviously I teach people how to trade the market and I trade myself and I trading is a big part of my life, but any, this could be relatable to anything you do. Any, any type of thing that you're procrastinating with and I related it with the computer, but it does affect my trading, okay? So anything, think about the things you're procrastinating right now in your life that you know you need to change. Rip the band-aid off, just go for it. Let me be the motivation for you to do that because in the long run, the longer that you wait, the harder it will be eventually or you might not or you might not be able to do it alone. But if this is exactly about your trading where you were going along and losing money in the market or break even or not getting anywhere or in a career that you hate, okay, and you need to find a way to make ends meet more and you're not making money and you've got to pull it together or you hate your life, do it. Change. Stop procrastinating. I just got done saying earlier, 
my goodness, half the year is almost gone in 2016. It feels like I just had a New Year's Eve party and it's almost June. Time keeps going. It is not waiting for us. It's not waiting for us to change. So procrastinating is working against ourselves. And that's the lesson today. And if you are procrastinating, making the necessary changes to improve your trading, if you're changing, if you're trading right now, to learn how to train from me, why? You, it's easier for you to make the changes necessary sooner rather than later because as time goes on, it gets more challenging, just like the computer for me because the small rock, which really wasn't even a rock at all, which was a flower, ends up turning into a real rock that turns into a boulder that you can't get up the hill yourself, that you can't get up the hill yourself, that disrupts your whole life, your dining room table, and your whole entire world. So take a lesson from me. And everything that I teach you is all stuff that I've personally experienced in some way or another. That's one of the reasons I'm very good at mentoring people in my training. All the things I've been through, I've experienced personally. And I'm telling you, you can learn from me. So take it for what it's worth. I thought this was valuable today because the whole computer issue came up this week. And there's some other things going on in some people's lives that I know right now where they're having difficulties changing. Nothing to do with trading, but just changing changing careers and changing some things in their lives. And I talk to people all the time that want to trade. They want to trade so badly. They want to do the class. The class is now $49.99. Guess what? It wasn't $49.99 last year. It was less money. Now people have procrastinated in taking the class and it costs more. And that's what it is. Do you see how it's it never comes out? And a year's gone by, those people have wasted their lives, they've lost money in the market, and now the class is more. And it's like a boulder. But it could be a bigger boulder next year because the class might be nine, $9,999. So, you know, you've got to get to the point where you say, I want to change my life. I want to trade the market. I want to short fit with Melissa every day. I want to be here. I want to learn from this person. I hate my career. I hate my job. I want to make extra money. I want to do something different with my life. I want to be a professional trader. I, I want to change. I'm tired of the stagnation. And I guess that's where I'm at with the computer. And my father is here today, and I don't know when I'm going to rip the plug on this thing. I might rip the plug today. I have to go to Pennsylvania this weekend. I might rip the plug when I come back on Sunday. You might not see me again until the computer's set up. I'm going to do it. I've had it. I'm done. I. It's going to be painful for me to set it up, but I am determined to do it, and I'm going to do it in the next four days. And Paul is going to help me. But he doesn't live here. He lives in Florida. And now it's a boulder. Now I got to get Paul to help me over the phone and Kathy to help me. And she lives in Massachusetts. And Rashawn to help me. And he lives in Maryland. And my father to help me. He lives in Pennsylvania. And I have to probably call Best Buy and 17 other people. And look at what a boulder I made for myself. So don't do it. Learn from my mistake with the computer. Pull the Band-Aid off and rip it off. And the sooner the better. Okay, let's go over some questions here. Write any questions in the room, okay? Any comments, any questions, if Paul has any. May is talking about stock trades. I'm not sure why because we're done trading for the day. And May, if you did the trade that I called today, which I'm sure that you did, you shouldn't take any other trades. You're out for the day, it's Friday, it's time to have lunch or a glass of wine. <laughs> so I don't know why you're asking about it, a stock. All right, let's go to Journey Woman's questions next. And anyone else that has any questions, but we're done trading for the day, May. Journey Woman is at the boulder stage. It's not clear to me what change I really need. Your new trading plan lowered risk. So the gains are small. Today you only made $136 on Faye after the stop out when you lowered the stop when I did. Then you had to go back in smaller, not to exceed the max loss per day in the second trade. Okay, so overall today, did you make $136 on the overall day? What did you make on the day from the first stop and then the second trade, you actually made $136? Bucks. Okay, now here's my question. Your second trade, you didn't take normal size. Is that what you're saying? I think that's what you said. 
If you had taken regular size on the second trade, how much would you have made on the day? You would have made more than 136. Just figure it out and write it in the room how much you would have made. Roger, we're going to finish the rest of all of that on Monday. We didn't finish that. Okay, Roger. Journey woman saying you would have made twice that. So if you had taken the same size in the first trade and the same size in the second trade, you would have made approximately 270 bucks today. Is that is that correct? So let's say you make $270 five days a week. Now just go with me here. 270 times five. That's $1,350 a week. Can you, could you live with $1,350 a week? For, could you live with that? Between now and December 31st, 2016. If you made $1,300 approximately per week, could you live with that? Your goal is 2000 All right, I'm just using today. Let's pretend today is your new life, though. Forget, forget anything before. My goal is to make, you know, $100 million in 2016. So let's, let's, let's move our goals aside. I haven't figured out how I'm doing that yet, but, I'm, but I, 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 I've got to sit down and figure that out this weekend. After I get the computer moved over, then I'll figure out how I'm going to make $100 million by December 31st. But right now, so I can just buy Google and hold it for the rest of my life. It goes to 2000 but anyways let's let's get let's get back to to, to journey woman if you made thirteen hundred dollars a week okay could you live with that between now and december 31st 2016 could you you could live with that you're being real you don't necessarily expect to win every day it's just that the wins have to be more than the losses. But you just told me what the main problem is with today. You didn't take the same size. If you had done ENDP today, you would have taken a stop. The second trade set up and dropped a dollar thirty or something. If you hadn't taken the same size in the second trade in ENDP, you wouldn't you wouldn't be it wouldn't have been up to equal it. So number one, I don't know what, what everything you're doing, but number one, that is your number one problem I see right now. Lowering your risk is fine if you lower your risk, but every trade still has to be the same risk or your wins and losses don't add up. May, right now I'm helping Journey Woman. Are you listening to me, Journey Woman? You can't, you, you, you can, you can, you, you have to have the same risk or close to the same risk on every trade. Roger's saying, how do you know what size to take? You're going to pick a dollar amount that you feel comfortable risking, and every day you take the trade, the number of share sizes that you take will vary. If I say 10 by 30, your risk is 20 cents. If you risk $200 a trade, how many shares are you allowed to take? Write it in the room. Write it in the room right now. 20 cents, $200 a trade, how many shares can you take? Come on, let's go, people. It's 11.15. Answer my question. I'm trying to help you, but I'm not going to be here for another hour. No, 2,000 is wrong. 2,000 is wrong. 10 by 30 is 20 cents. If your risk is 200, you can only take 1,000 shares. If your risk is 400, you can take 2,000 shares. No, nobody got it right. 20 cents. 20 cents, if you're allowed to risk $200, it'd be only 1,000 shares. Okay, this brings me to the number one problem here that I see with people. I said 10 by 30. 10 by 30. 10 by 30 is what? Here, listen. 1030 minus 1010 equals 20 cents. It's the amount of the entry minus the stop. And I only say the pennies. I never say the dollar number, which you know if you're in here. But the first number is the entry. The second number is a stop. You have to do the arithmetic. This is one of the number one pe problems that people have with my class and with trading to be profitable that I never imagined in my whole entire life would ever, ever, ever be the case. Although you can buy a calculator. And I'm sitting right here looking at a calculator. It's a Texas Instrument calculator, T1-31. 
It's a solar calculator that I have had all the years since I've trade, uh, traded and all the years since I did mortgages. This calculator is probably from 1985. It's a good luck calculator. It, they don't even make them anymore. Bottom line is buy a calculator. I keep this, it's good luck. But there's a calculator on your phone. It's simple arithmetic. I can send you the cheat sheets, but you must size yourself right. And every trade you take, no matter what amount of money you risk, has to be the same. If you decide you're taking two trades, then it should be the same. Or you're not going to have equal results. So that is number one. And I never thought it would be one of the biggest problems that people have. Journeywoman, one of the problems you were having at the beginning of the year, though, I know, is you were holding, trying to hold everything to a target. I don't think you do that anymore. I think you've gotten over that problem, but now you're not sizing yourself right. If you take two trades, the risk has to be the same. So if you're willing to risk $400 on a day, then you are allowed to take two trades with $200 a piece. I think four trades is a lot. You don't need to take four trades with me. Whatever your risk is, it has to be the same. Boots gets it. May, I am going to get the computer hooked up. I'm just using that as an example, as, a, as an example to, to, to just try to help people. Because it's something that I, that I you know, you've been here with me. You've seen what I'm, that I haven't set it up. Journeywoman says she's confused. To allow yourself two trades a day, you have to use half the daily risk for each trade. If you lose in the first trade and take it again and the trade is one R, you break even. That's correct. That's absolutely right. You're 100% correct. You, you couldn't be more correct. Let's just say we had done Faye today. Let's say we lost completely in Faye, first trade full size. We didn't, but let's just pretend that we did. Let's say Faye lost full 1R in the first trade. It didn't, but let's pretend that we did. Then the second trade set up. We took Faye full size. It did not break 14. Let's pretend it didn't. Let's pretend we took the trade at 1425, it dropped down 25 cents, and, and it got to 14. And, and let's pretend at that level there, we were right there at, at basically then, if we had killed the trade, we would have been not down on the day, but not up on the day. But if we had let it break 14, we would have been positive, and then it dropped through the low, and you saw where it went. But I'm saying, say we get it into the drop, into 14, let's pretend if it hadn't broken, if it had reversed, failed, flipped, went back up green, went over the high. If it hadn't, we we would have we could have gotten out break even. You could have been flat on the day. You could have not made any money. I think when it got down to one level, I said you could take some out if you want. You heard me say that. I said that out loud in the room. I said I'm not taking it out. But if you want to take some out, you can. When it broke 14, when it got to 14, when it got down to the low, I said you can take some out if you want to here. And then then after it got down, I said stay with it. But I gave you the option. Some of you, of the money management is the issue. Galahad is one of the biggest problems I've ever seen because when he's up money, he doesn't get out. He doesn't get out. He did get out last week in a beautiful trade, two beautiful trades. No, three. I think he got out of the Spy, Facebook, and Google last week, and he had a huge week. But I had to tell you to get out. I don't know why some of you have such an issue with getting out. But, you know, ultimately, I think it's just one of these things where, you know, you have to be aware of whatever your problems are. Do you not take profits? Do you not size yourself right? Do you want to hold every trade to the target? Are you hesitating, not taking the trade on time with me? Are you late in the entry? Do you want to wait for the confirmation? What was the one that, that was the other day? I don't even remember now. Um, fit. Yesterday. Okay, Paul said he wanted to wait for the confirmation. It never, it never gave it. I think he did something else. I think he ended up doing something else yesterday. But what if it doesn't get the confirmation? I don't wait for confirmation. To me, the confirmation is a gap rating. No, 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 no. To me, I rate the gap and the confirmation is the first setup because the gap rating is one. Two is the setup. 
That's the confirmation. I don't wait for I don't wait for another confirmation. I get the gap rating. The stock rates 22 points. That's it. I'm watching. Sets up, I take it. That's the confirmation. I get the setup and the entry into the open. That's the confirmation. My rating system is telling me watch it. If it sets up, take it. The setup, the first setup is the confirmation. So I don't wait for a second confirmation of the day. R squared and Paul tend to do that because a lot of J traders do. But once you get used to my system, okay you won't need to do that when you're trading eight years then rating my gaps but i'm just saying the the to me the entry is the the entry okay is the confirmation because i have the gap rating so if you are waiting for secondary confirmation and missing the trades or if you're taking them late, or if you're not sizing yourself right, or if you're taking the same share size in every trade, your risk is all over the place, or if the first trade stops and then the second trade you don't size yourself the same, it's a problem, or if you don't take profits when you're up, or if you're waiting for every trade to go to a massive target. I did not wait for uh, Faye today to go to $13. Could I have? Yes. What if it would have backed up against me? I had 5,000 shares of it. It was 10 o'clock. What if it hadn't kept going? What if I'm 10 cents from the target and that's it? Remember, targets are areas. I can say in a perfect world, you know, 13.00001 or whatever. But look, it dropped, it broke 13, it went to 12.90 something. Who knows where it is right now? Everything's an area. You cannot predict everything exactly, exactly, exactly. The best that we can is the best that I can do it. And it's pretty darn good. But I can't predict everything exactly. I mean, to the penny although it's pretty darn good. So you have to work within the confines of the system and make it work for you to make money. Okay? I could have scaled out. I didn't. I don't, I don't typically trade like that. May, I, May, I'm going to get my computer hooked up. I appreciate you trying to help me, but don't worry about it. I'm going to get it done. The whole lecture today was about procrastination and change. What I want each of you to do that is not where you want to be with your life, whether you're in here and you're not making as much money as you want to be, or whether you are not in here at all, have never done my class, or thinking about doing it, I want you to consciously think, you can write it down in a piece of paper, write it down in a journal, and ask yourself why you are not taking my class. Why haven't you signed up yet? What is the reason you're procrastinating? I have so many people that absolutely know that I know what I'm doing and love to be in the room whenever I do open houses. There's a million people here today. Okay, I have so many people that come and they can't press the button to pay for the class. Why? It's gonna be at a point someday where it's unaffordable for people. Why? Because guess what? I'm, 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 I have no problem in so many, many things in my life proceeding and just jumping into, jumping into the unknown in the future. I have absolutely no problem in many, many things in my life jumping into change, taking risk and doing it. The computers thing is something that is just for me, electronics, I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a bugaboo for me. We all have different things. For me, you know, the electronic stuff it's just, a, it's just a thing for me. But there's so many other things that I excel at and do so well that I have no problem taking risk and changing with. The computer is a thing for me. Luckily, it's not something that has, you know, completely destroyed my life. But it is getting to a, a point now where it's, it's hurtful and I've got to do it. But some people really hang on to things and have trouble changing with things that are very, very important in your life. And your career and your finances are things that are very important in your life and you have to take them seriously. And even though sometimes it's hard to make changes, and even though sometimes it's hard to take the risk to pay for a class or take a trade and press the button or, or figure it out or pretend that you have to go back to school. I mean, pretend that you have to go back to 11th grade and you have to learn arithmetic. Pretend that you have to. You know what? I'm going to bring my sister here. My sister teaches second grade. I'm going to have her teach a class on basic math. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring my sister here. She's fabulous. She's the best teacher in the world. She's a beautiful girl. I'm going to have her come. She's going to come to New York, and I'm going to have her teach a class, and we're going to do a math class. Well, I'm going to have her teach a class on arithmetic like she would teach her second graders, and we're all going to do it. We're all going to do it, and we're going to get quizzes, and then we're all going to grade ourselves. And she, she's going to grade everyone, and everyone will get a gold star, or they won't get a good gold star. Because that's what you have to do, some of you. You've got to go back to basic math because it, it all happens so fast. 
that's the thing. It would be easy to say, well, I've got, I've got 15 minutes to figure out this differentiation, but you don't. When I say the number, if I say 35 by 62, that's it. You have to take it. If you press the button with 10,000 shares and you didn't really want to risk that much money, you're screwed. You're screwed if it fills you because if it flips against you and stops you out, you're down. And I don't want to see some of you only take 100 shares and risk only like a little tiny bit of money. Then the stock drops. You could have made $2,500 and you say, oh, whoa, why is me? I didn't get the huge one today. I didn't make all the money in the one today and the next one doesn't work. So the problem is that it is happened so fast that you have to go back to basic arithmetic. You've got to learn it in your brain. You've got to study it. You've got to go back to school and you've got to change. You've got to say, you just have to say, you know what? This is so silly. Melissa is right. I'm so smart. I'm doing all these things. I'm like, you know, I'm whatever age I am. It just, it sucks that I have to go back and pretend that I'm back in school, but you know what? I've been away. I've been away from these things. We live in an electronic world. I figure everything out in a calculator. I don't have to think this fast about math in my head, but guess what? Now I want to trade. Now I want to make money. Now I want to do this thing. It's serious. It's important. I'm going to have to learn this stuff. I'm going to stop procrastinating about it. This is so silly. I don't know why I put this off for myself. I'm gosh darn it. I'm going to do it or whatever the case may be, okay, with anything. And I'm just using it as an example because that has been a hurdle for people. But the main hurdle for a lot of people has been the which have come to me and come to the open houses and I talk to people on the phone. They have such a problem procrastinating about taking my class and, and the price keeps going up. And I keep going on with my life and I keep building the business and I'm, I'm proceeding. And I, and, I, and I promise you that I'll get the computer hooked up. But, you know, I, even me, I'm using it as an example, it has problems procrastinating and changing. That was, you know, so don't feel bad about it, but you got to do something about it. You must do something about it. Don't let another year go by that you lose money in the market or sit and watch me continue to trade day after day after day doing it while you're not there. Whether you're here with me and you're missing the trains or whether you're watching all my videos and not taking the class and missing all this opportunity to be here with me and learn from me, which by the way is opportunity. What if I stop teaching the class? What if I actually have a show full time on television, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night, every night, and I can't teach the class every month? What if I have one class a year? What if I have one class a year? When, when what are you gonna do? What, what if Paul ends up teaching the class? Now I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but you know what it might be? What if I am not here for you every second of every day at 11.30 on a Friday here this morning? Because I'm moving on. I'm out there. I'm going to do stuff with my life, okay? Your chance to make it is here with me right now and talking to me and answering your questions and me spending the time with you and caring and being here. And I always care. But I'm saying you might not get to talk to me one-on-one -on -one or have me teach the class or learn and redo the class 17 times in a year. You know, the, the time that you have with me now, please, it is so valuable. I can't tell you how valuable it is. Take advantage of it. This is where the procrastination is going to hurt you because you're not going to get a chance then to learn one-on-one -on -one with someone like me who, by the way, knows how to trade the market. I mean, I know how to trade. You're procrastinating about the options, Roger? Well, think about it. All right, I've talked on and on and on and on and on. My father is waiting to take me to lunch and I have to curl my hair. So bottom line is, I pledge to you that between now and May 31st, I'm giving myself a cushion, even though I'm really gonna try to do it in the next four days, but between now and May 31st, I will have my brand new computer hooked up. I will have e-signal hooked up, okay? I pledge to you that I will. I'm gonna make a concerted effort to do it between now and Monday. I want you to write down things that you're procrastinating about. Rip the Band-Aid off, okay? The sooner the better. I'm here for you if you want to email me. I'm going to be away this weekend, but you can email me. Roger, email me your phone number, and I will try to call you later in the car when I'm driving back to Pennsylvania. If you want to do the class, you can sign up. I'm offering the options letter free if you sign up for the class today. Okay, for May 14th and 15th. For those of you that are ready with me, I think some of you know what some of your issues are. 
And for those of you that are behind with the mentoring sessions, I, we, I tried to set it up with you, Jaguar Paw. We're going to do it next week. You're next on the list. You're not going to escape. Mountain Girl says, awesome lecture. <laughs> All right, okay. I will talk to you guys later. Have a great weekend. Great job on Faye. If you need anything today, email Paul here or email me. Have a wonderful weekend, everyone. Great job today. Lots of good feedback. We went on and on and on, but I think it was good. All right, have a good day, everyone. You're welcome.